Hello and welcome to another roundup of New Scientist Science Video News. I'm Katrine Brehick and I'm the online environment reporter. And I'm Tom Simonite, online technology reporter. In the next three minutes, we'll be bringing you science clips from robots playing Indiana Jones to experiments with pet triangles. But first, some flirty squids. Japanese researchers recorded footage showing the Dana octopus squid producing bright flashes before attacking prey. The lights that you're seeing here come from bioluminescent bulbs at the end of its arms and may stun prey or maybe just help it judge distances. The scientists also seem to have accidentally started a conversation with the squid. When two lights were attached to the bait, they circled without attacking and flashed their bulbs back. I think it was love. At any rate, I'm hoping the experimenters will push things one step further. Maybe they could flash the light bulbs and see if they can talk squid. And that would certainly make a good research video. Now from biology to robotics, James Kuffner and colleagues at Carnegie Mellon University in the States have been asking Honda's humanoid robot Asimo to play some unusual games. I caught up with New Scientist magazine's technology editor Helen Knight to find out more. In this video, Kuffner is testing out software that allows a humanoid robot to plan a route through a constantly changing environment. So he's using the classic computer game Frogger as an example of that, in which squares are constantly moving in front of Asimo and he has to plan his way across the other side without touching any of the moving squares. Thanks. And I understand there were some more difficult tests as well. Yes, in the second clip, the target that Asimo has to reach is constantly changing. So just when he thinks that he's reached the spot on the floor that is his target, Kufner will move it away and he has to replan his route to get there. Great. And can Asimo take a break now he's mastered that challenge? No, Kufner's planning an even more challenging experiment for him, something he calls the Indiana Jones experiment, in which Asimo will have to get to the other side of the room while avoiding spinning, spinning disks and moving spheres. And now to our final clip, which sheds light on why pet owners are more forgiving of their own little creatures than of the neighbors. The psychologist Sarah Kiesler showed this geometrical encounter to volunteers who were told they owned either the large triangle or the small one. Everyone agreed the large triangle was being aggressive, but those who owned it rated it as more likable than those who didn't. Kiesler says the test shows that a feeling of ownership over a non-human object makes us more likely to put a positive spin on its actions. So remember that next time a dog's owner tells you it didn't mean to bite. Thanks, Tom. I will. And that wraps up our roundup of science video news. Don't forget that you can read more about all of these stories on newscientist.com and join us next time.